was thinking today, I'm on my way actually to the post office to mail a couple packages. Some of them I am taking to FedEx and there's a little bit of uh, leeway with that because even though it's Saturday, if I take them to FedEx, they just sit in the warehouse till Monday. They don't actually leave the warehouse till Monday because um, even though they're open and accepting packages, there's no one deliver, uh, like sorting and uh, sending the packages out today at the FedEx facility. So I'm, that's not as big of a rush. Um, I'll probably either bring those over to FedEx this afternoon or um, Monday morning. So, but I'm definitely trying to get all packages ready at nighttime, uh, at like at the end of the day, so that I'm not leaving. So that way, I have the option to um, deliver, go to the post office when there's less traffic, um, because it can save me. Um, otherwise, it's like twice as long or three times as long even um, as far as my time is concerned if I'm going to the post office when there's traffic. I can also go to the UPS store which is just across the street from me. It's like half a block away. So that's another option. They accept uh, the mail there. Wow, it's really, really colder today. I've noticed uh, compared to yesterday. Uh, my uh, temperature says 34 degrees Fahrenheit, so just about freezing, but I feel like um, there's moisture in the air and we get um, here like a wind chill and um, definitely feels much colder than 34. So yeah, it's like that bite in the air and I'm definitely feeling it today. So I just mailed packages. It was nice and cozy in the post office. And now I'm headed, we got a light dusting of snow on everything last night. And um, yeah, so it's definitely feeling and looking like winter outside. Uh, with holidays over, um, some people still have their holiday lights up, but I've taken all mine down. And luckily I did it before the snow and the frosty air came back. Okay, so um, I had to build a box today for a larger painting. And I'm going to, now that I think about it, because I'm taking it to FedEx, I'm going to do some more reinforcement, at least to the corners of the box. It seems like the bigger the package, the more likely it is to sustain damage during shipping. And especially it seems like these um, larger like paintings because it's just canvas and like a stretch canvas and it's very lightweight and fragile. And you don't think it's fragile because it's just canvas. It's, it's not breakable necessarily, but um, I think that's part of the problem is that they're so white lightweight that heavier packages shift and like bust right through the canvas in the box if it's not really reinforced with extra large paint with larger paintings a lot of times I'll build a crate and um, it doesn't have to be a full crate it can just be some uh, cross bars uh, out of wood uh, like a lighter weight wood pine but um, just something to uh, give it some protection and uh, structure so it doesn't get crushed and uh, preferably not punctured anywhere so having the bars like a certain um, like I said it doesn't have to be completely enclosed but to have um, those slats will help protect it from being um, kind of like every uh, few inches will help it protect from getting even punctured because uh, the, the wooden, uh, what do you call wood? Boards? Yeah, boards. Uh, they'll protect it from having something poke into it, most likely. And then uh, corner protection.
protectors are also very helpful. And um, maybe I'll do a video on how to make a corner protector for all the artists out there that are wondering about that. Um, but definitely the original art needs to be... I used to try to do minimal packaging, but I was getting so many packages damaged that I've had to go back to just uh, using but like instead of flat even if it's like prints instead of just flat mailers it has to be in a box because otherwise it's getting damaged and uh, yeah that's the only way to protect the art is to make sure that it's um, in a good house as it's being shipped across the country or the, the world even Another thing I've started doing is, uh, because I do a lot of oil paintings that I'm shipping pretty much fresh off the easel, is I will build like a little cradle for it so that um, nothing is touching and then I'll put, uh, wrap a piece of cardboard, like a cardboard flap um, over the top of the crib so nothing is touching the surface of the painting. And that way, um, I've just had uh, too many instances where I thought the painting was dry. It's even been like two or three months. Should have been plenty of time, but when you press on it, sometimes those really thick layers, um, they'll start gushing wet paint. So maybe the surface was dry. Um, and the way oil paints dry, it's not like evaporation. They're not water-based, they're oil-based. So it's, whoa, the, oh my gosh, all these people are not staying on their side of the road. Okay, so it's not evaporation, it's... So with oil paint, it's not evaporation, it's oxidation, and that is a chemical process of the oil paints reacting, the pigment act, reacting with the oil, like the linseed oil usually is what is used, and it hardens over time, and it's, it's I would call it kind of like a curing process so it actually changes it's not so there might be some solvents that you've used but those would evaporate within like a couple hours of applying them and then um, the rest it's a like I said it's an oxidation and it could even go on for year years so um, that's why uh, some old paintings crack um, and have um, like crackles in them over time uh, because they're continuing to oxidize over time. Um, whereas watercolor and acrylic um, is water-based, so that is um, a process of just evaporating the water out and then it's solid. But with oil paints, it's different. So the uh, point I was making is even though it, the painting looks dry, it's dry to the touch it's still not, um, there's still uh, wet underneath and paintings have gotten smushed and messed up when I've tried to ship them in like bubble wrap or something like that. So I'm really, for most of my paintings, unless it's like over six months old and doesn't have a lot of thick paint, I'll, um, in that case, then sometimes I'll, I'll go ahead and just wrap it flat with like um, glassine and bubble wrap. But other than that, I've been trying not to put anything on the surface of the oil paintings. And also some of my thicker acrylic paintings because I don't want like a thick piece to, to like get damaged at all. So, um, because it's still fragile. Um, so that is something that I do. It requires more packaging and a bigger box. And, uh, so fortunately. Fortunately, uh, for the painting, I've been uh, spending more effort on protecting the paintings, but um, it does require more packaging from like a ecological standpoint. But, um, you know, ho hopefully people are recycling. I try to recycle my bigger boxes because sometimes they're hard to, to find. Um, 
you know, I'm not a big company, so I do, I do order from Uline. So they have some standard uh, boxes that go up to certain um, sizes, but some of the custom sizes they don't really have. So I'll just reuse boxes that I get from fa the factories where I get my stretched oil paintings or or my canvases or my stretch canvases or the um, art store when they are shipping me some of my canvases. I'll just keep some of those really nice boxes and then reuse them and sometimes cut them down if they're too big. And yeah, so the size of wood that I would build a, I'm just looking in my garage because my son just moved uh, to a different bedroom and he, his old beds in the garage and I'm seeing the slat the slats is that what you call them the slats the wood slats that came uh, were on that bed frame and that's about the size of wood that I use to build a crate is the kind it's not a two by four it's smaller it's like a one not even one inch thick by four inches piece of wood um, to build the crate with so maybe when I get my garage cleaned out I have a bunch of furniture in here right now I can show you some of the tools I use in my garage for uh, some little wood projects it's not like a wood shop I don't have a lot going on here but I do have a, a few things set up that I'd like to show you and uh, this would be the garage is where I usually would build the crate unless it's really, really cold. Then I, I would maybe do it in my basement inside. Um, but I have some things rigged up out here. Uh, some wood shop tools, I guess you could say, uh, that are out here permanently. So I could show you those sometime. All right, well, that's about it. I'm home now in my garage, so I'm gonna go inside. And um, if you have any questions about how I ship things, um, go ahead and leave the question in the comments below and I will uh, get back to you.